talking about uh, CDMS. Uh, well, CDMS provides an overview of all factors related to the migration of applications and ICT equipment from one data center to another data center. Uh, nowadays, this happens a lot because a lot of data centers, they are either running out of, of capacity or uh, they are uh, consolidating nowadays. Um, the training actually is a very practical approach with hints and tips based on best practices and, of course, uh, my own experience. Um, after this course, you should be able to plan and implement the migration from its current the source data center to another new target data center. Uh, reference is mainly made to international standards, but of course your local standards apply and take precedence. Um, the program is a two-day training, uh, which consists of uh, about 11 chapters. And what I will do is I will go through those chapters very brief briefly to show you a bit of the content. Um, chapter one is about the data center strategy. And the data center strategy is the, we will talk about the data center life cycle. And of course, the choice you have to make, to make, are you going to upgrade your current data center or are you going to migrate to another location? Um, another way to postpone migration or even to postpone upgrading is to optimize your data center at ICT level. So uh, buy new equipment which uses less power and has more computing power. There are also outsourcing options like uh, co-location, cloud com com computing, and you always have to ask yourself the big questions, do I really need to migrate? Uh, one of the most used uh, outsourcing options nowadays is cloud computing. So in lesson one, we will also discuss all the different types of cloud computing you will see in the market and what applications are best for what type of cloud computing. Um, the second lesson is about uh, project management. Obviously, uh, a data center migration is a large project and in project management, we will talk about the importance of project management. Uh, project communication, because communication is uh, most of the time not done very well during a project, and this can lead to many misunderstandings. Of course, we will discuss the project organization, um, cost and time, estimating methods, and the project constraints. Of course, like every project, it is all about time, cost, and quality. And quality, um, you could see for uh, data center migration is how to reduce the risk of any outage during the migration itself. The third chapter is risk management. Here we identify risks. Uh, we discuss different risk assessment methods, uh, risk elevator evaluation, risk treatment, and of course, we will discuss also a typical risk you will find in data center migration projects. Uh, this is just an example on how you can allocate the different types of, of, of risk uh, considering their impact and probability or likelihood. Um, the number uh, which will come up, it will give on how important is that risk? Uh, what do you have to do to make the number lower so it will be an acceptable risk? Um, another chapter is migration strategies. There are many different data center migration strategies. We will talk about heterogeneous migration, homogeneous migration, and actually the lift and shift, the physical migration. Most of the time, 
um, when you migrate uh, your IT from one data center to another, we are not talking about just a single uh, strategy. Most of the time, it's a combination of those strategies. We will help you on what strategies to, to choose, what are the pros and cons um, of each strategy, and also what is the impact of IT transfer formations during the strategy. It means that we will discuss, okay, if you have to change your IT infrastructure, what will be the impact on your data center migration? Um, lesson number five, sorry, uh, migration strategy, uh, just to continue a little bit on the content, uh, it is not uh, data center migration is not a straightforward project. Eh? It is not only moving the hardware, but actually you are moving uh, the business applications. Eh? Ideally, the business must keep functioning during the relocation itself. Um, you can say that a data center migration project is successful if the change is completed without anyone in the business noticing the relocation or if you have uh, discussed about this, you can also say, I am, uh, I'm having a successful data center migration project when I uh, was within the downtime that we agreed by the, bus by the business. Legal aspects, uh, a lot of people think that um, a data center migration project is just a technical uh, uh, project but also legal aspects have to be taken into considerations. Um, uh, for instance, the regulatory requirements, contractual considerations, and also the legal aspects when you are decommissioning your data center. <coughs> so amongst others, there are three main areas that should be uh, investigated. The regulatory requirements and national standards, uh, surface contracts and SLAs with your end users, but also the enterprise contracts, which could have an impact on uh, when you are migrating from location A to B, or as we talk about from the source data center to the target data center. Then lesson six is about high level discovery and planning. So first thing you have to do is you need to align with the business. Yeah, you have to look, uh, you have to talk with the business and actually you are going to do a review with the, with the, with the business on what server level objectives will you have in a new data center? Uh, what are the requirements on designing the target IT architecture uh, and the target data center? And you during this high level discovery and planning you are also gathering in for formation to to make it possible to have a rough estimate on the size of the project <coughs> so you are performing a high level inventory of what to migrate it provides insight in the size of the project it gives input for the budget requirements, but also it helps to discover who is involved with this project. It um, also provides insight in how much time do you need to migrate. Do not under, underestimate this. Uh, I've done some uh, migration projects and it took sometimes even more than a year from the idea to migrate until the final execution. If you have an inadequate baseline inventory, you will most likely, je most likely jeopardize the project, and this will lead to excess of, of course, time, cost, and it will increase the risk of down downtime of your applications. Um, designing the target data center, well, when you move to another data center, it can be a completely new data center, but maybe you are moving to an existing data center or a co-location facility. You still need to know, okay, what are the requirements for the target data center? Eh? What uptime expectations do I have? But also the size of the data center. Eh? 
architectural has space, power, the cooling requirements, etc. There are uh, other items like uh, uh, security, efficiency, testing, and commissioning. Um, to give you an idea, we will discuss uh, all the details on space, uh, power, cooling, but also the network. Eh? What redundancy measures do you want to take for the network? And you want to eliminate as much as possible single points of failure. And also new network technologies could have a positive impact on the capacity factors. Um, detailed discovery and planning. This is on day, day two. We will discuss the importance of discovery. Uh, we will also discuss uh, automated discovery tools, network and system dependencies, and uh, what are my migration waves and how to plan migration waves. Uh, migration waves those are batches of systems or applications if you cannot migrate in a single weekend or a single day. Then you have to de decide how do I um, uh, put applications and systems together so I can still run applications in my uh, uh, source data center and at the same time already start up the target data center. And last but not least, um, migration is very labor intensive, so we will also discuss staffing here. Often the discovery or inventory process is the most underestimated and overlooked activity within a data center migration project. Yeah? So in a complex data center migration project, it is vital to work from a common and shared base of information, not only the hardware, but also the applications and who is involved for those uh, hardware systems and applications. Uh, safety, um, to perform a data center migration, uh, well, it is not very uh, it is not a very common activity. You are actually uh, most of the time moving around a lot of hardware with all the risk in, involved. So we will discuss here the role of the safety manager, uh, the technical safety review, personal safety during the migration itself, and also fire safety during uh, migration. Um, do not forget, uh, safety is always everybody's job. Um, Security, during a uh, migration, a lot of people are walking in and out of the server room, walking in and out of the data center facilities. So you have to get a balance between easy access, but also you have to make sure uh, there is no security breach. So we will discuss access control, managing security during migration, but also key management. Eh? You have to make sure that not only the physical keys are available during migration, but also passwords of systems to be able to test the systems on the new location. Um, policies and procedures for physical facilities, security and access controls should be present at both the source and target data centers. They are required to support the overall objectives of the organization's information security policy. So sometimes during the migration, the security policies and access procedures might create unexpected problems. So that, for instance, uh, support from vendors, the people who are giving support, that they are not granted access. And this can delay, of course, the actual move of your IT systems and applications. Uh, implementation, of course, this is the actual moving of IT systems. Um, 
resourcing, huh? who is going to do the actual move, uh, how to select the right logistics team, uh, packing, transport, installing the equipment, etc. This chapter is, uh, well, for 90% about uh, practicalities during the actual lift and shift of IT systems. And to give you an example, uh, we have to inform the mover beforehand about the size and weight of the racks and to support his transport capacity planning, uh, computer racks, how to uh, stow them, uh, how to avoid tilting and collapse, collapsing, etc. Also, we will discuss uh, the uh, decommissioning of systems. Then, um, the last chapter is something a lot of people uh, forget, is how to close the project. Because a lot of people think, okay, we have moved all the equipment to the new location, but that does not mean that um, uh, you finish the project. So we will explain why you need to have a proper project closure, uh, what you can do with the lessons learned, and how to get those lessons. Um, we will also discuss a phased completion of the project. <coughs> we also um, discuss criteria. Huh? What do you need to do before you actually can close the project and the outcome of the project? And last but not least, the end of the project. Um, this will uh, finalize um, uh, the uh, training. After the training, uh, uh, sorry, after the uh, project has been closed, then the project board has to confirm that the project is closed. And I always uh, advise to have a formal project closure celebration. Eh? Uh, make sure you invite all stakeholders and project staff do not forget to praise the project team members because maybe you need them in another project. And uh, the project closure party always marks the end of the data center migration project. Uh, this is also the last chapter of the CDMS training. Um, when we have finished the training, there will be an exam. Uh, it's a closed book exam. Uh, 40 questions are involved, multiple choice. It's a one hour exam with a passing mark 27 out of 40. So you need to answer 27 questions correctly. So actually you are allowed to make 13 mistakes. Um, when you pass the exam, you will get a, a, a certificate which is worldwide recognized and accredited by a vendor neutral, independent and industry related accreditation body. Uh, the uh, exam and the certificate uh, is organized by Exin. Mm -hmm.